Hello YouTube, my name is Courtney and welcome to my channel, Courtney and Books. Oh, something different about me? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, my hair! Yes, I cut off all my hair. I'm actually super, super happy with it. I have needed to cut my hair off for a very long time. It was very damaged. I am a product of somebody who gets very bored with their hair and so I dye it and I do bad things to it and then it gets extremely unhealthy. Today begins something I'm going to call We're obviously gonna think of a name later. I have no idea what I'm gonna call this, but basically, when I find a five-star book, I'm going to gush about it, but I'm going to gush about it to you guys. From books that moved me, to books that kept me up at night, to books that were just so out of this world that I need to tell my friends, AKA you guys, my IRL friends would never understand. Not true, I actually have a plethora of IRL friends who absolutely accept me for who I am. Bless them for doing so. Today I am talking about a particularly twisted piece of dark romance cake by author A. Zavarelli. I have actually read books from her before, but the first book I read of hers was just a good old bully romance, which I will be featuring in another top five video coming up here soon. But this was so different from the first book that I read of hers. I was not expecting this at all, which just makes the shock factor that much more effective. But before I get into it, a word from today's sponsor, which is me. I recently added new merch to my shop at CourtneyLeeAuthor.com and it includes shirts for readers like me. Shirts like this one. If you don't follow me on social media, then you don't know that I am a huge fitness enthusiast. I like lifting weights, I like gaining muscle, and so I made this particularly for me, but anyone else that does that sort of thing who is a lifter and a reader. I also have shirts like this one. I have a few designs available right now and new ones are coming soon and every purchase supports me on my indie author journey and this channel. Whew, now that the cringy self promo part is done, let's get back to the actual content. The book I am talking about is Beast by A. Zavarelli and it has a whole dang list of trigger warnings that if you are not a seasoned dark romance reader, you will want to pay attention to. This book is for the dark romance veterans out there and what I mean is it's probably not going to appeal to somebody who was just dipping their toes into dark romance. It is a slap to the face. I personally don't really have triggers so I was completely okay with everything that was happening in this book and I'm able to separate reality from fiction but I do want to reiterate that if you are going to read this book please pay attention to the triggers. It is a huge deal when somebody doesn't pay attention to triggers and warnings on books and then reads a book and then gives it a bad rating because of those triggers. Beast is a twisted fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast. After reading two books by this author, I'm assuming that they have a pattern of keeping a fairly steady pace and then BAM! The pace changes drastically. Somewhere about three quarters of the way through, it's like getting hit by a semi-truck filled with secrets and passion and gasps. This book follows two characters with both of their perspectives. We have Isabella who won a show sort of like American Idol or America's Got Talent. So she very quickly was thrust into stardom. Basically, whether she likes the spotlight or not, she is in the spotlight. Before the story starts, Isabella's father has gone missing. Now you can imagine how devastating that is for Isabella in general, but because she's in the spotlight, she has the paparazzi, she has a very pushy manager who is really looking to get in her pants. She has a lot going on in her life and on top of it, she's worrying about her father who she doesn't know where he is. So you could say she's at the end of her rope. Meanwhile, you have a sexy reclusive stalker who has tapped all of her rooms with security cameras. And I mean every single room. Stalker boy, aka Javier, aka Javi, is not just some random guy. Oh no, him and Isabella's father go way back. And in Isabella's eyes, her father actually favored Javi all through her childhood, which, as you can imagine, created some pretty severe daddy issues. Even though she never met the boy, she knew of him and the constant attention that he was receiving caused a certain sense of neglect. Now her father warned her as she was growing up to stay away from Javier. He was very, very dangerous. She didn't know why she was being warned away from him. I mean, her father was spending so much time with him. Why was he such 
a threat, you know? She didn't know the details of her father's work necessarily, but now somehow Isabella suspects that her father's disappearance has something to do with Javi, the mysterious problem child her father supposedly loved more than her. But she's not about to seek him out because he's dangerous. Baby, stop. Baby, stop. Just act normal. So after a great deal of stalking, Javi kidnaps Isabella and brings her to a castle in the woods. I mean a mansion in the woods. This is a good time to mention that Javi has a beard, he wears a hood, he conceals his appearance for reasons we'll later on discover in the book. But Isabella has no idea what he looks like. Somehow this hood conceals him completely. I have said this in my books before as well, where characters can't recognize people because they're wearing a hood and the shadows are just too impenetrable for you to see their face. That's not actually a thing that happens in real life. I'm pretty sure I've never seen somebody in a hood that I did not recognize. But anyways, Javi wears a hood and he has a beard so she really can't see who he is. She just knows he's big, he's buff, he's fit, he's very scary. But no matter what, Isabella knows it's Javi. Somehow she knows that this is the child her father spent almost her entire life paying attention to over her. The supposed very dangerous person. And he even has a sexy Spanish accent. And when I was reading this book, there was only one person's voice I was envisioning through the entire story. But perhaps this is the only real evil left. Anyways, she is thrown into a room alone, doors locked, and there's only one thing in that room and it is a piano and Javi says, play. Isabella having a pretty serious complex about music, having been in the spotlight for a while, playing songs she doesn't even really care about, refuses. So our boy Javi starves her. He denies her pretty much all human basic necessities and more or less tortures her with solitude and discomfort for days until she actually gets up and plays the piano. And then he gives her a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in return. It's at this point in the book that it's pretty obvious that Javi's intentions are to brainwash her, AKA break her. So eventually if her father ever reappears, his baby angel will be completely ridiculously twisted and broken. It's not clear at this point why Javi has such a vendetta against her father, but it's very obvious that the vendetta is very serious and for very serious offenses. But Isabella is not so easily broken. She is far too strong to be brainwashed in a matter of days, except she needs food and she needs clothes and being denied that she does the one thing that her captor tells her to do in order to get food. And then she's so thankful for the food that she thanks her captor, even though he's the one that denied her food and clothing and comfort in the first place, but that's beside the point. She will not be brainwashed and neither will I. Once Isabella complies, she is transferred to a beautiful room with a beautiful bed and she is given a bit of clothes. The story continues with Javi trying to get her to do increasingly outrageous things from play the piano to questionable sexual acts and humiliating her in different ways. In return for these outrageous acts, she is given food, he comforts her, he applies aftercare, and even gives her sparse amounts of freedom to roam this mansion on her own, as long as she doesn't go into the West Wing. But Isabella will not be complacent. She realizes at this point that she is starting to rely on Javier, even though he is basically torturing her, but she is becoming reliant on the rewards that he gives when she complies to his demands. So at this point, she recalls a story that her father, one, I think it was her father, that once told her about a bird that was captured and put in a cage. Its captors gave it food, it gave, they gave, them, gave him comfort, they clipped his wings, but you know, gave him all the things he needed to survive. And it relied on these captors who, had, who it had grown to love. And when the cage was opened, it couldn't fly away. It didn't know how to be free anymore. So it chose to stay locked up. After recalling that story, she chooses when she is given freedom to roam the mansion to look for a way out. She finds an underground tunnel that leads all through the mansion, hoping to find a way out. But instead of finding a way out, she finds herself in the forbidden and dreaded west wing of the castle mansion. Isabella uncovers the horrendous and awful secret about Javier, which puts him in a whole new twisted light. And it also sparks 
that instinct that all women seem to have, wanting to take care of the messed up sexy man in a hood who's just misunderstood. Javi inevitably finds her and things get seriously As usual, after a long and painful and torturous and somehow pleasurable couple of days, Javier once again comforts and cares for Isabella causing her to start gravitating towards him in a way she is very aware is unhealthy, but also unavoidable after continued repetition. This is called brainwashing, and at this point in the book, I was feeling it too. After many days of this pattern being repeated, where Isabella is punished and then comforted afterwards by Javi, she starts to, see, starts to feel a very twisted sense of security with him. So when he introduces a new male into the situation, Isabella panics and immediately chooses what she thinks is the lesser of two evils. Although technically that translates to the evil she is more familiar with. And I, as a reader, also found myself desperately choosing the more familiar of two evils in the situation where Isabella shouldn't have been wishing for either of them. More really messed up shit happens and Isabella starts turning things around by poking and prodding at what she thinks is Javier's soft spots, despite the punishment she endures after every time she gets close. And this is where Javier really starts to question his resolve. As Isabella gets closer to parts of him he hasn't shown anyone else, he begins to catch feelings, but he can't let that stand. So what does he do? He punishes Isabella for him catching feelings. The cycle continues until Isabella slowly starts peeling back the layers of the Javier onion and finding the poor abused child underneath it all. He's just misunderstood. I know what you're thinking, Courtney, how can you recommend this? This sounds like a horrible, awful, abusive story that can in no way be healthy. Well, it's pretty messed up. It's also fiction. In no way do I condone kidnapping pop stars, forcing them to play the piano and then feeding them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But when a book can make you run up to your fiance who really doesn't care what you're reading at the time and tell him I've been brainwashed, I'd say it's done its job, which is evoke emotion entertain and leave an impression. It's at this point when the Zavarelli semi-truck hits and the whole story gets way bigger than a mansion in the woods. The two characters dig up emotional trauma and secrets that turn the entire story upside down in a good way. And somehow in a very questionable and grueling method, seem to bond over that trauma until they are madly in love and dependent on each other. Is this book a depiction of a healthy relationship? No. Is it messed up? Yes. Was it a great read? Absolutely. <laughs> this book sang to my twisted little heart and I loved it. Or maybe I just have been brainwashed into loving it. That's it for this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I need your help to reach my next goal of 600 subscribers. And unlike everything else, which I think I have to do by myself, I cannot do this alone. And if you liked this book feature and you want to see me do more of these in the future, tell me so by liking and commenting on this video and sharing this video with your friends. Hit that bell so you never miss me in the future. And until next time, happy reading. I will see you all in the next video.